Okay, so I've got my AutoCAD file open with the bathroom plan I've been working on and I've also got the Photoshop file with the AutoCAD file imported and the, the couple of textures that I've created uh, and shown you in those previous videos. Uh, and so now I want to go through the process um, firstly just to update uh, any changes that you've made in AutoCAD and bring those into Photoshop and then look at doing some um, finishing touches to the uh, textures and the rendering in Photoshop, uh, maybe looking at uh, things like ambient shadows and possibly uh, drop shadows if we have time and, uh, and text of course, which you need to add just to put a few notes on. So, uh, so I'm going to go back to AutoCAD and then you can see here that uh, I've got these fittings but I'm just going to move them a little bit so that there's a change that will be noticeable and I'll move this one as well don't have too many changes but uh, just want something that's different there we go that might do okay and so now back onto my page and I'm going to make this again into a uh, PDF file so on the main menu I'm just going to go to print and then if you like you can do plot where it says print, it does exactly the same thing. And if you get this message, you usually can just choose continue to plot a single sheet. And then, um, this time I'm just going to make sure that you can see I've got DWG to PDF and then I've got ISO full bleed A3 as my, uh, my paper size. And maybe take note of all the other settings there, but they're the two important ones scale one to one of course and then I'm going to click OK and choose where I want this file to go. So the, the file name's up to you but I'm just going to give it one that I'll recognise, so bathroom plan updated. So I'll cancel that and then you can see that uh, it's opened it for me in Acrobat but I want to bring this into Photoshop. So I'll close that uh, Acrobat program and then bring up Photoshop and then you can see that here the, uh, the page size is different so to make my life easier I'm going to change the image size here uh, on the image menu and so I said image size but I'm actually going to change the canvas size they're a little bit different so I'll go to canvas size and then I'm going to change the option at the bottom uh, to choose the, uh, the square in the middle at the bottom and I'll change the height then to the height of an A3 page which is 29.7 and then the width is uh, 420 uh, mil or 42 centimetres and oh no, actually sorry now look at it so it should be the um, the bottom right corner to keep the title block down there and uh, well it'll be a little bit different to this but uh, I'll show you what to do in a moment about that so I'm just going to click OK and then you can see that we've got this really big page it's probably a little bit too big but that's what you've been given and uh, so that'll be similar to the, the page size that I'm about to open so I'm going to go and uh, go to the file menu and choose open and find my new file. So there it is, bathroom plan updated. And so there's a really good option here that I should have showed you last time. Uh, where it says crop two, uh, you can go to media box instead of bounding box. And then you wouldn't have had that issue with the page size being too small. But uh, it's it's easy to change afterwards. So here if I choose media box and then leave everything else on the defaults, click OK and you can see then we've got the uh, the page there and this time it's imported as an A3. So now I want to uh, copy all of those lines so I'm just going to go to the, um, oh sorry it's not coming up so I'll just click somewhere to wake it up and then go to the select menu Ah, oh, it's hang on there, sorry, it's not uh, selecting. 
So if I control I, but uh, hang on there. Right, let me select all the three to do this one. Yep. Okay, so I'm using the shortcut control A. I was trying to show it to you on the menu, now it's coming up. Sometimes Photoshop does that, or maybe it's just on the projector, I'm having some trouble reading it. So it is fine on my screen, so it's just on the projector, that looks like it was grayed out. So yeah, so control A and normally that option select all will be there. So you can see it's just made a marquee selection over the whole uh, image. And then I can go to edit and copy. And then, or control C is the shortcut. And then go to the other page. You can see the positioning's a little bit different, but that's fine, we'll adjust that. Uh, and so then you can see I've got this layer here um, called layer 2, which is the previous line work that I've imported. Um, I'll maybe just rename that so it's clear. Uh, it's AutoCAD lines 2. You can see I've done this before because I've got one below that's switched off and I might delete that. I'll just turn it on so that you can see it's the previous line work that I adjusted. So I'll just bring that down to the trash can to delete it. And then again, go to the edit menu and then paste. And then I can just drag this, oops, sorry, going back to the remove tool and better just drag that, there we go. Uh, and it'll snap fairly easily onto the previous lines and should line up exactly. But if you do that step that I showed you before, and choose media box, then you won't even have to move it. Um, so now I can change this new layer to AutoCAD lines uh, three, and turn off the previous layer, which you can see has some other changes. So zooming in there, you can see that we've got the uh, new position of that seat and the vanity unit. So now I just want to continue rendering and uh, so I've shown you how you can add patterns. Uh, I might just quickly go over uh, adding more simple um, colour fills again even though I have shown you before with those walls I know. Uh, so here you can see I've got uh, a layer called wall render which has that solid fill and the layer there, layer 1, is actually my ambient shadows that I've done previously. Uh, now, anyone who's watching the recordings, had I done that in one of the previous recordings, the ambient shadows? I don't remember. I didn't I didn't record it. Yeah. No, I didn't record it, I don't think. I know I showed it, but yeah. 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 So what I'm going to, I'll trash that layer and I'll do that again. Okay, so I've got the wall layer, uh, wall render, which has that solid colour for the walls. And then the floor render is the the one with the textures. And so now I'll make another layer. Again, clicking on that, that button down below, which is create new layer, the one that looks like a page. And from the beginning, I'll name this uh, furniture. Render, I suppose. So in the first quick, I'll go over how to um, fill in things like this with a simple color. So just with the... Um, rectangular marquee there. I can make a selection over that bench. And then, uh, because I've shown you the fill option already, under the edit menu you can choose fill and you can fill things that way. Um, but also make sure you know the paint bucket, which I think I may have shown you before, but I'll, I'll just show you again. So the paint bucket tool over here, if you don't see it, just hold down that button. It might be on gradient or, or um, the 3D material drop, but uh, again, you can always go to paint bucket there. And then you've got the colours. So you've got a foreground colour and a background colour. Uh, and so there's a few squares. If you click on the little, uh, the little version of those squares just up above, that resets them to black and white. And then the arrow pointing in two directions there, if you click on that, that flips the foreground and the background colour. So now with that foreground colour set to white, if I click there, you can just all get in that colour. If you want to get a different colour, you can easily just choose that um, from the colour picker. Choose the colour you want. Or you can always get it from these um, swatches as well. And when you choose them, uh, again, it'll put it straight into the foreground colour. 
and then you can you can easily change those colors. Maybe we'll go for nicer color than that. There we go. And uh, well, slightly better. Uh, maybe it's a bit too yeah light or something. So we'll go and uh, make that a little bit yeah. So now it's good to do. We, you know, we want to spend some time on getting the light color. Um, so maybe I'll do this bath as well, just to show you some different ways of selecting. So if you go to the selection option below that rectangular marquee, which has, if you hold on it, the other shape options there, below that you've got the um, lasso tool, and there you'll also find the polygonal lasso. You've also got magnetic lasso. I've never had much luck with that one. Very occasionally I found it useful, but not, not very much. The polygonal lasso, though, you use all the time. So with that, you can click points and make non-rectangular selections. Oh yeah, the magic wand works, but when you've got to choose uh, things like this, you have to pick in between so many things. It's often easier just to pick the whole area, so you go underneath all of the lines. I will show the magic wand though, so just to show the difference actually, that's good. So there you can see I've got a selection, I've missed out a little bit here, but that's very easy to pick up with a rectangular selection. If I hold down shift, that will add. Now actually, uh, I'm glad someone had a problem with this earlier tonight. Um, if that doesn't work, when you hold down shift, if it doesn't put the plus there on the cursor, it's usually because someone's changed the, the selection options up here. So make sure you're on the first button there, that's the default option. And then again, when you hold down shift, you can easily add to that selection. So I'm just gonna make a rectangular selection over this part to, uh, to fix that corner selection up. And now you can see it's selecting all up around, uh, around that bar. Um, so I'll, I'll fill that, and uh, maybe I'll just do a um, do a white white fill there. Uh, oops! So I just clicked accidentally to um, deselect that, but I can easily go to edit and then choose undo, and go back one step. And so now, if I go to the paint bucket, is I can fill that. Um, so I'll undo that though as well, and just show you the difference with the ma uh, sorry, magic wand selection. Again, if it isn't coming up straight away, just hold down that option there and uh, you can choose magic wand. So if I was to try and choose that with magic wand, firstly I'd have to be on the right layer or use the option here, sample all layers. So then when I pick, you can see, well, sample all layers isn't gonna help me much because it's gonna pick up all the textures. I'll turn that option off. Instead, I'll go to the AutoCAD lines layer and I'll try again. So you can see it's picked inside that area, but it's also gone around a float hole. So I'd have to hold down shift and then select inside there, and then also in between all these other things. It's not too bad with this bath, but imagine if you had to do that with that with that bench there, you'd have to pick inside each of those rectangles. It just takes a lot longer. And you find that's quite common. Buildings are generally fairly rectangular, lots of furniture is as well, so it's really easy just to make uh, marquee selections quite often. Magic one definitely is helpful though, so it's good to know about that as well. Uh, but um, now I want to undo and go back to the previous selection I had. So it's a good chance to show you that. Yes, cool. yeah. 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 So, so you mean bring it to the front? Uh, so you mean to the texture? Oh yes, yeah, that's the order of the layers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the question was, yeah, how do you bring it to the front? And yeah, basically the layers order um, determines what you see. So things on top uh, go to hide things underneath. Um, and I'll go over that again in a minute. So, um, so again, I need to go back a few steps now. And what you'll find if you go to undo, it will undo one step, but then if you do undo again, it actually will redo. So you just keep going back and forth. If you're using the shortcuts, control Z is the shortcut. If you're used to using that though, you find it's a bit frustrating because it will just keep going back and forth. So if you want to go back further, you need to have the history panel open. Under the window menu, you can see their history. Now mine's ticked, so if I choose it again now, it's going to disappear. I can simply go back to window and then choose history and you can see that's brought it back up. And you can go back almost all the way. In most cases, you can go back all the way. If you've been working in a long session, though, you maybe can't go all the way, but 
usually you can go as far as you need. So you can see there all the steps that I've done. So I can go back to where I deselected uh, the rectangular marquee, there it is, and it's back to the original selection. So it's pretty good the way I think you can go back through your selections and any other steps that you've done using that history panel. Uh, now I'll put it off to the side using the arrows there, and I can always bring it back here as well. And then with the paint bucket again, I'll fill that. And again, as you were saying, um, if you want to change the, uh, the order, it is just the, um, the order of the layers. So in this case, really all I could do is put it underneath the floor, but uh, I'll obviously want that to be on top. So, uh, okay, so I've got the uh, two main items uh, shaded, but I might just quickly do these as well because I do want to have a, uh, a drop shadow. So I'll again just use rectangular selections to get the vanity unit. So I'm holding down shift now to select that uh, uh, the sink where it sticks out. And then with this one, with the, the WC, or the toilet, uh, again I'm going to hold down shift using the polygonal lasso. And when you've got curves like this, this is the great thing about doing your line work in AutoCAD, you don't need to redraw the curve because you're going underneath it. So you can usually just do straight lines with your selection and just get underneath. I mean, magic wands might be fairly quick here as well, but it doesn't take long using polygonal lassos. And you'll find most people who use Photoshop all the time uh, will select this way. So that's good enough, but maybe I'll just get that little bit at the bottom to make sure. And again, just quickly fill that with, uh, with white for now. Okay, so uh, so now I want to do some uh, some ambient shadows, and then after that I'll do some drop shadows. So uh, so I want the ambient shadows to be in between the furniture layer and the floor layer. So I'm going to select the um, the floor layer, and then make a new layer, and I'll call this. Uh, ambient shadows. So these are one of my favourite things in Photoshop and you'll see most people who do architectural rendering uh, will do this, use this technique all the time. Most people who do, do it with Photoshop that is. Uh, so I want the, firstly I want a selection based on the floor layer. So I'm going to just select my Floor render layer, right click and then choose. Oh, sorry, you better right click in the right spot. So, not on the, um, on the name, you need to right click on the actual thumbnail, the little picture there, and then you'll get the option to select pixels. Okay, so you can see there it's just selected all of the area where I've done that floor texture, and that'll ma make it a bit easier now when I do my shadows. Uh, so, I'm going to change to my ambient shadows layer switch my colour to black, just by swapping those colours there, and then go to the paint tool, which is again one of those standard tools everyone who uses Photoshop a lot uh, would be very familiar with this tool. Um, used to be called what was it, airbrush, um, but again now it's just called uh, paint tool or the brush tool. And uh, so once you've selected that and made sure it is on the uh, brush tool option, then you can right click and you'll see, see the brush option. So I'm going to choose one of these soft round brushes. And then if you move your cursor away, you can see how big it is. So that's far too big. I'm going to bring that size down now. And you can see that's maybe a bit too small. So it's a bit bigger than that. There we are. So that's about the size I want. And then I want to zoom in, so I'm going to use um, the Alt key, holding down Alt, then I can roll the wheel forward. Um, oh, now unfortunately this happens, it's sometimes going to uh, keep this up, so if you just click anywhere, then uh, that, will, that will wake it up. And now if I use Alt and then zoom in, you can see it's painted a little bit there already, that's fine. And notice it's painting around the, uh, the furniture. 
because the furniture is on, on a layer that's above the, um, the floor and the shadow layer. Okay, so I'm just painting all around the, basically where the surface is joined. So if you're wondering where to, where to put the ambient shadows, it's wherever you have surfaces that meet at different angles. So here we've got, sorry this, this is freezing a bit while I'm talking, but yeah, so here we've got a bathtub that would have an edge that is vertical, that connects to the floor, which is horizontal, so we're going to have ambient shadows. So all the corners really, corners of your rooms are going to have ambient shadows. And you find it just adds a huge, or well, a lot of depth to your, um, to your drawing. So even though I haven't selected those furniture items, I can still easily paint around them. They're going to have drop shadows as well, which will add a bit more depth and um, give some idea of the lighting, but uh, the ambient shadows I think are in some ways are more important. And just painting, painting, so it's, you know, it's almost like you're drawing or painting in real life. So it doesn't matter if it's a bit rough, in fact it's sometimes better if it is rough. Um, now I haven't filled in this wall yet, but I'm still going to paint around it because I know I can fill over the top of that really easily later on. So just coming around, so it's kind of tan, there we are. So I'm going to leave this area out because that's an opening. Uh, and then continue here. This is another opening, so I'm going to leave that out too. And then just painting, painting around those wall corners, all around there. Back to the beginning, and then maybe just around this furniture as well. But remember, we will have some drop shadows there too. And you might be thinking that looks very black. Uh, now, that's also maybe going a bit too far. Uh, so you can undo. But little tip I can give you there, if you find that you are needing to undo a lot, don't go too far because if you try and paint in one big sweep and you make a mistake right at the end after dragging it for five minutes or something, which I've done, then it'll undo the whole thing, which is a bit sad. So if you just do, it's like you're painting, you do s shorter brush strokes and it sometimes will work better. There we go. Okay, so Again, so that looks fairly dark, but now I can easily go to the um, layer options and just adjust the opacity, which will make them see-through, effectively making them lighter. Another good option is to change the uh, blend mode there to multiply, which honestly won't give a uh, very noticeable effect at first, but uh, you'll see in some cases will, uh, will look better. Uh, because essentially what it does is it darkens what's underneath rather than just making it black, transparent black over the top, so it's darkening the texture underneath. Um, and uh, so, oh yeah, so I thought I'd show you how to fix things. So if you realise you, that you do want to actually make those shadows smaller, you need to know how to erase things. So I'm trying to zoom in here with the shortcut, but it's, there we go. Uh, so, to erase, you've got the eraser tool. Okay, so sometimes you need, some need to make sure that one's on the right option. And then it has the same brushes. Okay, so I can maybe make this one a little bit bigger. Get the hardness down so it's going to erase with a nice soft, soft edge. And just bring that back. There we go. Okay, so you can see how it automatically that now reads as though it's uh, the floor is below the walls, even though I haven't even rendered all of the walls yet. Uh, so then I'm going to, maybe I will render one of the walls, this one here that's really annoying me. Uh, so I'm going to make a quick selection there. Uh, and you can see it doesn't want to because I've already got this bigger selection. I'll show you a really handy option there. Deselect everything, under, under select, you can choose deselect. Shortcut Control D, and, uh, and that can be really helpful. Uh, so now I'll just make a um, rectangular selection over that wall, and maybe I'll do this. The rest of it, magic wand here probably would be fine, but uh, I'm stuck in the habit of using these selections, so I'll do it this way. So, uh, well, that'll do for now, and so. 
I'm on the wall render layer, and I want to fill with this uh, this pinkish, whatever it is, lavender sort of colour that I've used. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. Um, I kind of see it there. Let's find one of these. Uh, so lines. Where's the eyedropper tool? Who remembers? Oh, there it is. Okay. So the eyedropper tool there. Um, it can be again on, on different options, but the uh, again the thing that looks like a uh, an eyedropper. Uh, I can use that to select the uh, the colour there that I've used previously. I'm going to put that into the foreground colour, and then I can again use the paint bucket tool. Uh, so to finish off the shadows, I'll show you quickly um, some ways you can do drop shadows, mostly for the furniture. Now, this is not compulsory. You don't have to do this to, to complete the assignment, but, uh, but it could be a good option. So going to my furniture layer, I'm going to, well, firstly, I shall deselect uh, everything. And then I'm going to right-click on that uh, furniture layer and then go to blending options. And then you'll see the option there, drop shadow. So while that's still open, I, I, I've ticked it, and then I'm going to click the plus to get the settings. And so we'll change the angle and the distance. There we are. So you can see already there's my shadow coming up. And so that's a bit too far. So I'll bring that out of there. It's a bit hard to see because it's not dark enough, so I'll change the opacity there to make those shadows darker. So hopefully you can see that a lot more clearly now. And uh, so moving this around, you can see it's coming up on the, the bench as well. So we can change the angle there to uh, whatever you want, uh, what direction you want your lighting to be. So that, that might be good for what I'm doing. Uh, so the, the distance, I might just bring that out a bit more. See how that looks. And actually now I've got to bring this angle down so that it's close to uh, 45 degrees coming down this way, which would be what, minus 135. Type that in if you want to make it exact. And, uh, and so now I might bring the darkness or the opacity back down a little bit. Uh, to soften the edges, uh, it's the size option, I think, from memory. There we are. So that makes it, again, a little bit more realistic. Shadows tend to be have a soft edge, especially in a, an environment like this. So there we are. So that's it. And it's easy to take those drop shadows off if you don't want them because they're just an effect that's been added to that layer. And uh, don't worry if they go into your walls. As long as you have your wall render layer above the layer for the furniture, then it, they should cover them. Uh, you don't want the, definitely don't want the shadows from your furniture to go over your walls. It looks a bit weird. So, um, so the final thing then is some text. Text is really easy in Photoshop. Uh, I'm going to firstly choose the highest layer, which is my AutoCAD lines. You always want the text to go over everything else, so, so that's going to make it go on the top. And you'll see now, after choosing the text tool, if I click and drag, it'll make a rectangle. Then it's going to make a new layer for this text. You can choose all the options at the top for your font. Uh, so, let's find out like Tahoma. Maybe I'll go for this time. Oh no, Veranda. I don't mind Veranda either, so there's Veranda. There we are. Uh, and then you've got the size, so 12 point, maybe a little bit small here, maybe I'll go for 16 point. And then uh, the colour, <laughs> we don't want that uh, foreground colour, so I'll just change that to black. And uh, start typing. Ah, now, actually in this case, maybe uh, on those tiles, yeah, black isn't probably the best option. Uh, often you would want black, but here probably we want white, or we can put a background on. And uh, even here, 16 points, probably not big enough, so let's go for 24 point. Let me try again. So, bathroom. 
Yeah, fairly legible. Um, you can add outlines to the text as well, but uh, maybe it'd be better to have uh, the text black and put a, uh, a white background underneath. So if we uh, just select the text there, I can easily change the color again back to, uh, to black. Yeah, so I've got my bathroom text there. And um, for memory, there's no quick option for making a background in Photoshop. I don't, I don't know, someone might know if they've added it. Does anyone know? Raj, do you know if they've added, no. uh, added, have they added an option to put a quick background on text in Photoshop? I didn't think they had. I know. And it was like, no. Nah. Okay. So, well, even if they have, it's good to know the, the, the quick, cheap way, which is to simply put a rectangle behind it. So, uh, so here I'll just go down to the layer below my text, and then I'll make yet another layer, and I'll call it text background, and, uh, and then I'll just make a rectangular marquee selection. It's kind of good in a way that it's not automatic because then you can, you've got total control over the size of this. And then I'll just, uh, just fill that with white, and that'll do. So. Uh, I hope. No, I just, yeah, so definitely let me know if you've got any questions or if you're not sure about anything, but I think that should be the final thing you'll need to do to finish <coughs> off your project. So I know some of you are pretty close to that already, but uh, <coughs> Oh, I did that already. So I've done, so the first video I did on this shows all of that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Nice. Oh, thanks.